her was a swing boat, right? She's very powerful. What's your, you know, that you could talk about the chairmanship and everything else. It still comes down to you need three votes to win stuff. Do you think Vera enjoys that or do you think it's just she accepts that's the job and and she's taking it on herself to go ahead and be that person? I think she, from what I gather from watching the meetings, I haven't been in a meeting in person in a long time, but from watching them and listening to it, I think she accepts that role. <laughs> Obviously, I can't speak for her, but I, I don't know m- how much I would enjoy being that person. I think it's a hard job, um, and I think you're in a hard place, especially when you have to sit between those two groups of men every meeting and be that person in the middle, yeah. which I, I think she might be in the middle all of the way. <laughs> I think she might sit between them, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of fur flies around, Vera. And... Well, thanks for coming on today. Black Hills Energy. My name is Lynn Kendall. I am the Community Affairs Manager. Uh, we have Michael Pogany with us, who's the General Manager of Operations, uh, and Ken Myros, who is the Operations, operations Manager. Manager. I would say Operations Director. <laughs> He's getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the newbie in the bunch. Uh, but we have come before uh, and on a regular basis to give you guys just updates on operations and what we have going on. I I guess it's been a couple of years. I think COVID threw a little wrench in that, but definitely wanted to get back into the habit of meeting with you guys on a regular basis, telling you what we have going on for for operations (coughs) and the company, what our our, um, our forecast looks like as far as infrastructure and and development, and then uh, highlight the partnerships that we have here in, in in the Newcastle area, and then open it up for questions. This year, we do have uh, the franchise agreement is up. Uh, I think it expires in August. So following this conversation, we'll get an updated draft um, to you guys to to start that that conversation. Um, And along that process, we're happy to answer any questions, uh, come back with any information. Of course, we are open and transparent and willing to to work with with everybody we sure appreciate doing business here in Newcastle and look forward to a long future doing that. So with that, I will turn it over to Michael and yep. talk I'll about I'll maybe sit here if you just want to walk through those a little bit. So. Okay. Yeah. Thanks everybody. I really do appreciate your time. I used to serve on a small town um, as a council member as well in a small community in South Dakota. And so, Appreciate what you guys do. It, it, it's it's not just your day job, right? You have other things going on. So thank you for making some time for us tonight. Um, you know, as we as we talked about, um, really wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update of what we're doing, where we're going as a company. We really find it's valuable. Uh, we uh, asked the, the mayor for a little bit of time to to talk through um, as a business unit our electric utility, but also as a corporation what we do, and so. Um, Obviously, you know, we provide electric service in, in Newcastle. We also provide gas service here. So, um, but that service territory is much larger than Wyoming. We, we serve eight states in the Midwest and about a million, 1.3 million customers. So, in that footprint uh, from Arkansas to Wyoming, um, in just about every state in between, we provide either gas or electric. Um, a little bit of that, a little more detail on the, on the electric side. We, we have three electric utilities. Uh, that serve uh, customers of about 300,000 electric customers. Uh, That's our, what we call our South Dakota electric utility, which is the one that we work with. And that's, so that's uh, Western Wyoming, Western South Dakota, and then Eastern Wyoming. So up in Newcastle would be included in that uh, service territory. We also serve the area of Cheyenne with electric. So the municipal boundaries of Cheyenne, in addition to the gas there, we also do the electric there. And then going even further south into southern Colorado, we provide electric service to Pueblo and then west and east, Canyon City and Rocky Fork. So kind of a very ge- geographic split. Um, and certainly, as you can appreciate, three distinctly different areas of service. You know, South Dakota, Wyoming, very similar. Cheyenne, a little bit different than Colorado, a little bit different. So it, it's a definitely um, uh, a different territory, but it's the same mission, which is providing energy to our customers. So. Um, one of the things that we do at Black Hills, which we think brings a lot of value, is 
we're what's called a vertically integrated utility. So Neil Simpson 2, which is the coal plant that provides the majority of energy for Black Hills Power, uh, is fed by Powder River Basin Coal at the Lyodak plant, which is right across the interstate. So uh, we mine the coal with Lyodak resources, we convey the coal to Black Hills Power, and that ultimately gets generated across our transmission lines and serves Newcastle customers. So we really feel we're one of a handful of those types of facilities in the nation. And we, provide, we believe that it provides a great value to customers. Um, you know, across our footprint as well, in addition to that, on the, a little bit on the natural gas side of things, you know, obviously we operate in eight states. Um, we also do operate, not in Wyoming, but we also provide um, a similar number of production facilities in Kansas, uh, Iowa, Nebraska, where we generate our uh, natural gas from the wells and then serve customers at distribution levels. So again, putting quite a bit of value there. Um, you know, just kind of give you some fast facts about the, the energy that we provide um, as a utility, as a corporation, about 9,000 miles of electric line that we have to operate and maintain, um, and about almost 50,000 miles of natural gas. So there's there's a lot of territory for us to cover. Lynn, if you want to go to the, yep, the next slide. <clears throat> so we talk about South Dakota, and really Eastern Wyoming is, is a pivotal part of this as well. We call it our South Dakota Electric Utility. Um, really, the service territory here is southeastern Montana, all the way down to about Edgemont, South Dakota. So Upton, Newcastle, um, Belfouche, Sturgis, Rapid City, everybody in, in the western part of the state. In South Dakota, we're bounded by the cooperatives kind of on our eastern and northern boundaries. So uh, about 76,000 customers in our service territory. Um, Black Hills Energy South Dakota was the first utility for Black Hills Energy. So we, we've been providing power in the Black Hills region for almost 150 years now. Uh, that started at Homestake, uh, the Homestake mine in Deadwood back in the 1800s. And we've grown that footprint obviously since then. So we're very proud of that. Um, you know, our, our co corporation as a, as a whole, about 3,000 employees across those eight states. Uh, we have about 750 employees that are in South Dakota and Wyoming. So that would be you know, our corporate office in Rapid City. Um, of that 700, about 215 uh, are Black Hills Energy South Dakota employees. So uh, from the generation plants in Gillette to Rapid City generation facilities uh, to those of us that work in the operations team. So that kind of gives you a scale of how large we are as an organization. Um, going to the next slide. I wanted to talk a little bit about, about our generation portfolio. So, as I mentioned, we you know we started in Deadwood uh, many years ago, and have grown as a utility. And as you can all appreciate, the energy uh, that we provide has also changed and evolved over the years. Um, we were very proud of our history in coal, and um, you know we've also diversified our energy resource mix as well. Um, Natural gas has become much more affordable. Um, we are also starting to integrate some renewables into our portfolio. Uh, one of the things that we're very proud of is we have a very diverse mix. So if you look at the slides, you can see we still have about 40% of our coal resource. So coal provides about 40% of our resource generation. Natural gas is about 40%. And then the balance really is uh, a little bit of uh, diesel generation for emergency backup, and then uh, wind and solar. So um, we are integrating more renewables in, um, but as we've been demonstrated through winter storms and events, you have to have a balanced gener generation portfolio. You have to have this actual coal and natural gas. To keep going yeah, yeah, don't put us on wind farm. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't put us on. Um, but that, that kind of gives you a, a high level on what our, our portfolio is for, for energy resources. So if you go to the next slide, then. I want to give you kind of a 20-year outlook now. So providing service to customers, as you can imagine, the Black Hills is growing. Um, I know Newcastle's growing. Western South Dakota is growing a lot as well. And so what we do every three years is we look in the 20-year horizon. Um, because if you don't start planning on that 20-year horizon, by the time it gets here, you, you're five or ten years behind. And so 
Uh, we do what's called an integrated resource plan. And really what that integrated plan does is it looks at our generation resources and how we're gonna get the power to customers. Uh, we completed our last resource plan in 2021. And uh, we're actually on the heels of starting another one later this year. Um, but what that resource plan indicated was because of the growth in the area, we, we do have the, uh, the, the need to add additional generation. And so a couple of things that we're working on. In South Dakota last uh, fall, we added um, energy from the Fall River Solar Facility in Hot Springs. And so that was uh, an 80 megawatt facility that came online in September. And that is um, basically a non Black Hills owned facility. Um, we purchased the power from that facility and all customers get the benefit of 80 megawatts of solar energy from that facility. Um, our resource plan also indicates that we need to add another 100 megawatts of renewable energy. And so we're Literally, as we speak today, we're negotiating the final terms and conditions of that agreement <coughs> with that resource to come online in 2026. Uh, one of the <clears throat> projects that, that I've been working quite a bit on and, and our team will be working on pretty hard here over the next uh, year and a half is uh, an upgrade to Neil Simpson 2 in Gillette. So as I mentioned, Neil Simpson 2 is our, our flagship coal plant for Neil Simpson and for Black Hills Power customers. That facility is at its engineered life. So it was built in 1995. In 2025, it'll be 30 years old. And so when you have a facility that reaches its engineered life, you have two options. You either shut it down or re significantly reinvest to repurpose the unit for the future so that it can run another 30 years. Um, <clears throat> we went through a process and an evaluation, engineering evaluation, and Neil Simpson, as part of this integrated resource plan, will be re rehabilitated. Um, and we'll have the ability to either fire coal or natural gas. So we're actually going to add natural gas into that portfolio. What that does for us um, is gives us a lot more flexibility in operations. When natural gas prices are low, um, there's a lower maintenance cost associated with natural gas. So you, you reap the benefit of those lower natural gas prices. But when natural gas is higher, we can then leverage our coal resource there and use coal in that burner as well. So, it gives us a lot of flexibility. Um, if you guys remember Winter Storm Yuri, um, Neil Simpson too is what kept the lights on for Black Hills customers. So that coal plant during Winter Storm Yuri, you know, very cold temperatures, kept the lights on. And so it uh, definitely demonstrates the need to have a, a responsible, balanced portfolio of resources. Some of the other things that we're working on with that resource plan is we're, we're looking at new technologies, innovative technologies. We've got our battery, we're looking at battery storage at the utility scale, does that make sense? Uh, batteries are very costly, and so we're trying to go, you have to do the cost benefit on batteries. Um, you might have just heard, we just had an announcement with the, South, or the Wyoming Energy Authority on a pilot project at Gillette, uh, where we will be working with uh, an engineering vendor to potentially convert coal into, um, convert coal into hydrogen gas. So that, that's an interesting project because we can burn hydrogen in our turbines as well. So there's some interesting plays with that as well. And I believe the governor's office contributed a pretty significant uh, grant for that. So that's like a $32 million project. So um, pretty, pretty exciting and, and it's literally on the cutting edge. That's the one thing we can uh, say about Wyoming and coal is they're very thoughtful about the future. And so that, that gives a very good outlook for us. Um, doing a lot of research with the University of Wyoming as well on new in innovative technologies to, to keep the lights on well into the future. So kind of looking at the next slide. So we're balancing, you know, when you think about energy portfolio and energy mix, customers want the lights on and we demand the lights on 99.9999% of the time, right? And we're very proud of our fact, and Ken will talk a little bit about it in a slide or two. Um, we're very proud that we have reliability that is that good. We, 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 customers expect it, and that's, that's what our standard is. And so, um, you know, as we think about the evolution in the energy world, um, looking at renewables and integrating renewables, we still have a standard of performance and reliability that we need to meet. And so um, part of the targets that we're looking at uh, as we look at our electric utilities and our natural, and our natural gas utilities, we are looking at uh, reducing our uh, greenhouse gas emissions from our utility. 
uh, for natural or for the electric utilities by 70% in 2040. Um, now, understanding that um, we have to do this in a responsible way and not significantly impact the rates of customers. So, um, thus far, we've achieved 33%. Um, and that's been through retiring plants that are at the end of their useful life um, and running our resources really efficiently and, and um, ensuring uh, that the lights stay on. Similar on the natural gas side, we have something what we call net zero, where we're trying to reduce the emissions and leaks from our natural gas system, which, you know, that's common sense as well. You don't want to lose natural gas from your system. And so we're working very hard to replace old pipe and and ensure that we reach net zero by 2035. So with that, um, I will turn it over to Ken for a little bit of an operations update. He's gonna talk a little bit about local, kind of more of the local things uh, impacting the electric utility here. <coughs> at the end, we'll, if you guys have any other questions, we will be happy to answer them. So. Well, as I said earlier, I'm Ken Myers, I'm an operations manager uh, for Black Hills Energy. <coughs> And I, I see a lot of familiar faces, and so uh, I've been with the company for almost 30 years. So, in fact, uh, real brief, I, I actually started climbing poles here in Newcastle, one of the places where I had to come to work for a while almost every day. So, so I know the town very well. So, Mike alluded to it earlier, but this is one. This is the slide. If you go to System Reliability, this is the slide I get to brag a little bit about. And if, uh, first off, step with the grid, the, the the graph at the right hand side, we'll see where we line up. And we're, um, we fall into the top quartile of the nation as far as liability. And, and what that sets at is last year we had 42 minutes, a little over 42 minutes of the of, uh, average time for the average customer. And that's what safety means. It's the average duration of an average per, per customer. And so that's really outstanding. But I think what I'd really like to point to is, is the very last one, where it says Wyoming 1.96 minutes. So in other words, the average customer throughout all last year in Wyoming, that's our customer, was only out for two minutes uh, if you are to all the customers. So I, I would assume that most of the people here, uh, lights turn on every time you, you, you put the switch. And that's something we're really proud of. And we put a lot of work into it. I'll, I'll go a bit more on what, what it takes to make that happen. But but uh, under two minutes is is, is just outstanding. So we're, we're really proud of that. And then the next is the, the safety, which is basically average time that the customers had an average. And once again, if you look at that, that's that's uh, less than one uh, one time. So most customers, like they just heard, they ran out of job last year. And so, like I said, that's you know that's really important not only for for uh, our customers playing with their toys and stuff, but but businesses. You know, if you're, if you're a business owner, you know that when the when power's out, you lose money. And so, it's really important that we have the reliability to help all of us. So, some of the things that we do to, to ensure that good reliability. Is, is several different projects. And so when you look at transmission lines, if you look at the map over there, you'll see the orange lines, those are the transmission lines. And we have to, be, we have, to have several sources, because for obvious reasons, if, if we have a storm and it tears down a line, or if we're doing maintenance online, you know, we, we don't work 230,000 volts, excuse me, 230,000 volts hot, right? So we have to turn them off when we work on them. And so we, this redundancy is very important. And so, and, and that gives the ability that something does go wrong, Customers don't even know it, they just fed out a different line and, and life goes on. And so one of the really large projects we have coming up, I won't go into every detail, but uh, we're building a new line that, that basically goes from, uh, extend the line that goes from Gillette down to Cheyenne, and then it cuts over into uh, Nebraska. And once again, that'll just be one more piece of redundancy that we'll have. It'll also give us the ability to, to, to uh, uh, ship, for lack of a better term, ship more uh, electricity out of Wyoming to other areas. <clears throat> and so that, that, that helps with our reliability. Another hidden program that we have is the Distribution System Integrity Program. And as it states on here, you know, like everything else, it gets old. Our poles get old, our underground cable gets old, and we start having faults and things like that. So we have a program that we're going through and we're replacing aged infrastructure. Um, this summer we'll actually be doing a job right to here in, uh, in Newcastle where places the cable that crosses underneath the highway around and do a bunch of work there. So you see us out there. That's what we're doing. We're replacing that old cable and uh, solving you know, the new cable. Uh, the old cable, um, you know, lasts approximately 20, 25 years. The new stuff is should last way much longer than that. You know, that's what they're promising us. And I, and I believe when you look at cable, it's, it's built 
uh, in a much better uh, manner. We're also uh, changing out uh, poles and, and replacing over cable and or over poles or wire. Uh, copper after a while gets annealed and it gets really brittle, and so it's necessary for us to replace that. I might mention that you know we Newcastle, of course, we've been around for quite a while. An interesting fact is that uh, uh, Denver had uh, streetlights before Denver. Just a quick note. So and then another project we have going. If you go to the next page, <coughs> is uh, where we, we just recently finished rebuilding up the transmission line that goes from Gillette to Rapid City, and of course makes several stops in between. And that's once again for liability. The line was getting aged, and so we rebuilt it, and so it could go another 50 years. So some of the, the key safety liability programs, and I'm going fast, so if you have questions, please stop me, I'm more than happy to, to, to explain it. But if we talk about 2023, uh, one of the things that we do is every year we do 20% uh, of our lines. We go to literally every pole, every, every uh, we open up every underground transformer, we, we look at all of our system, 25, excuse me, 20% a year. And the purpose of that is just to find things wrong before they go bad. In other words, before there's knowledge, the idea is to fix them. And so we did uh, over 20,000 inspections last year on the system, that includes here in Wyoming. Uh, we remediated 444 things that we did find wrong before they, they caused an outage. Um, we went around and inspected almost 5,000 poles. Same thing, we, we go on, we have an entire company to test every pole every uh, five years, or excuse me, every 10 years for poles. And of course, we did a, a lot of tree trimming, 567 miles of tree trimming. Um, one of the challenges I've been on, and I'm sure Greg will tell you the same thing or anybody, is that there's the macro uh, economics that we've been dealing with. Between interest rates and supply chains, it's really been slowing us down. Um, you know, give you an example, some of the transformers now have more than uh, three times of the cost they were just a few years ago. And that's if we can get them. We, we struggle getting some transformers uh, between the growth of the nation, and, you know, if you think about hurricanes and things like that. They'll, 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 of course, they'll prioritize people out of power, and so they, they drop a lot of those things. So we, we have been trouble having real issues with our supply chain, getting our materials. So far, it hasn't affected us, but there's definitely some nail biting going on when, uh, when a, a truck is supposed to come with a load of transformers and it's late. But, but we have been able to keep up with it. Um, and, that's, that's been, and that's not only distribution ones, but transmission, trans, excuse me, transmission transformers and everything. It's, it's the whole system has been slowed down. Um, we've been, like I said, we've been able to keep up with it. And, and luckily, we, we have a very robust system, and so it works out. We'll be fine, but it's, it's just an issue. Like I said, the any business right now is going through. Any questions on that? And I want to ask you a couple. Yeah, <clears throat> from where it comes, your transformers? So we, we buy them from a, a company out of Texas and, and Mexico. And they make them there? They make them. So the, product, but the, the components come from all over, but the, that's where they make them, yes. The transformers. Correct. You know, and the poles, they come from different locations. A lot of them come from uh, Washington State and some other areas. So. You get any of your energy from the hydroelectric dams on Missouri? No, we do not. So I don't know if, how much detail you want to go to. Uh, that is a WAPA, Western Area Power Association for the government. And so when they built that, they went to uh, government entities. So it would be uh, Ellsworth Air Force Base, for example, and colleges. And then also then what was left over after that, they divvied it up to all the town, the municipal ones, not investor owned or rural electrics, but municipals. And that's who gets it. The only uh, hydro we have is just a little bit out of Spearfish Canyon. That, 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 that little, one little one still, I was going to ask that. It, it does. still yeah. works up there. That's beautiful. Yeah, it was built in 1911, and it still generates today. Uh, love it. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. So I just wanted to, to touch on a little bit of how we partner with the Newcastle community. Uh, I get the fun job. Uh, these guys have to do the hard work. I just get to, to partner with with the nonprofits and the communities and work on fun projects and everything that you guys have going on. So um, just wanted to walk through, I won't go through all of these numbers, but some of the things that we really focus on and that you've seen us uh, partner with you throughout the years 
our um, charitable contributions. Uh, you know, we we support the the nonprofits, sponsor different events, uh, work on capital projects. I know we contributed to uh, the senior center a, a few years ago, the new roof. Uh, we've partnered a lot with with the fairgrounds on some of the construction projects out there. Um, we are proud to par partner with the chambers and economic development initiatives that our smaller communities have going on. Um, so uh, we uh, we really pride ourselves on on how we engage and support the communities and, and the visions that you see for yourselves. Also in volunteer ways too. I know um, we uh, uh, it was last year, the year before. I think the year before we did the uh, uh, trunk or treat. And we had um, the lineman came out and handed out cookie. We probably or candy. We probably went through six hundred dollars <laughs> worth of candy. They kept calling, "Hey, we need more candy. We need more candy." <laughs> so we we did the fun things like that. Um, thank you. Uh, so energy assistance is also something that uh, we put a lot of effort into. We have our Black Hills Cares program. So uh, we uh, are, it's an opportunity for our employees and our customers to contribute to energy assistance programs. Uh, here locally, we partner with the Newcastle Ministerial Association and I visit with them on a regular basis. Uh, and they get um, uh, a few thousand dollars every year to help people in your community that uh, need help paying, paying their bill. We don't want to see anybody uh, in, in the, the winter have to go without power. And the stories that you hear are just heartbreaking. So uh, we are, we're happy, happy to be able to, to partner in that way. Um, we also uh, work with um, our local media stations, uh, KASL and the New Center Journal, um, to promote, you know, the high school sports and um, all the fun things that, that make a community special. Uh, and we, we like being a part of that. So like I said, I get, I get the fun job. <laughs> I don't have to climb poles, but I can, I can partner with the, the cool things that Newcastle has going on. So with that, I think the last slide, we just talked about kind of who our, our energy, our, our Black Hills Energy Leadership Team is. And I just want to say that, that we have we have almost 800 employees between South Dakota and Wyoming. I mean, a lot of those are at our corporate headquarters, but over 200 of them are working. They're, they're Ken's crews working really hard to, to keep the lights on every day. Power plants. Power plants. Yeah. So with that, we're happy to, to answer any questions. Well, you mentioned economic development. Yes, sir. Um, the last meeting that we had with someone from Black Hills uh, energy here with Black Hills, I think, power at the time. <laughs> so, what, what are you actually doing for reaching out or, or helping or doing what? What are you doing with economic development? Because we sure love that. I'd like to build your transformers right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's where we partner with your economic development organizations. Um, and because I can't, you know, and, and we have a, a really strong business development arm. So if, if there's if there's businesses that you're working with and things that we can do to help attract businesses to Newcastle, we can absolutely have those conversations. We do that with a lot of our communities where we, we um, you know, do site visits, work on site visits with potential businesses that are coming into the area and, and um, happy to, to talk to them about the you know, the energy and reliability and all the things that are important to those businesses. Are you working um, more so with the uh, Chamber of Commerces or are you working with city councils? Uh, it depends on the area. Uh, but we do a lot of work with chambers. Um, but in some of the smaller towns that the chambers uh, don't do a lot with economic development, it's more of the city council than we work with the city council. Uh, at this time, we have neither. <laughs> That's kind of struggling. <laughs> we're struggling, we'll say. Yeah. We're, we're building the team. Happy to help. <laughs> well, I'll work on that. Do you want to touch base a little bit on the, um, the ordinance agreement that is expiring soon, just for some of the council members that aren't aware of, of what it all entails? Absolutely. Do you want to? Yeah. Okay. So in, in Wyoming, and this is 
you know, a lot of states have a self for this, but Wyoming does. We have a franchise to operate the utility in, in the, the, the city footprint, basically. Uh, that Those agreements generally are, in many cases, long-term agreements. Um, you know, when we talk about integrity investments and that, I mean, it's multi-millions of dollars of investment into a community. Um, the, the most recent agreement, uh, I believe, expires in August, mm -hmm. and uh, was a 25-year agreement. So Ken, Ken, I think, was a lineman maybe at the time. Yes. <laughs> at the time. But um, so we have, you know, we have the, the franchise agreement, which is coming. But really what it is is, the franchise is an agreement between Black Hills and the city that allows us to operate in the city and then also contemplates the, the cost sharing between that. Um, and so there's a franchise fee and those kinds of things. Um, but it is, you know, it's due. And um, really what it does is it, it gives us, and, and this kind of plays a lot into Greg's world, is just, you know, how we operate in the city, how we can construct infrastructure, how we can rebuild our lines, how we can replace our street lights and those kinds of things. Um, and that's what the franchise does for us. So um, I think our next steps really were is we wanted to provide a business update. Uh, we felt you know to give a little bit of education on what we do, and then going the next steps would be to, to circulate a draft of the franchise. Uh, obviously, any questions that there are on the franchise, you would go through those, and then really come to terms on the franchise, and um, you know preferably execute that before the next one, or the current one expires. <clears throat> and you, are you, you will have a draft worked up for us? Yep. yep. We're very close, I believe, to having the draft ready. We emailed, so, <clears throat> you, got, you should have got the copy. Yeah, I did. Of the, current, of the current franchise. So, I mean, generally speaking, from a contextual standpoint, obviously, the language may be, you know, it's 25 years old. The language may be more modern, but as far as the form and context, it will be very similar to what you have today. So being that you have such a strong presence in the area, I mean, there isn't really anybody else that we could look to for, for the energy that you guys provide, right? There's there's not really any other companies that would be available to uh, run a franchise here in Newcastle. Provided that, yes, so there's a significant investment in the area. <laughs> and and it, it does, um, yeah, it does take a lot to operate a utility, um, but but as far as law goes, and I would defer to the attorney or others, um, that's how the process is set up. It's a process to create, you know, an open and transparent process for negotiating the terms. And so there are other energy providers in Wyoming, obviously, but uh, you guys are kind of the guys for the area. So. Well, that's that's one of, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to. To, to come and speak is to talk about our reliability and to ensure that, that, that you know, to let you know. Because I would, I would think that if you know, if, if your lights were out, you know, twice a week, you'd be looking at us and go, you know, I'm not so sure about these guys, you know. And that's why it's important that, that we provide such good service for you guys because really that's our goal is that you don't need to think about electricity, you know, that, you, that it just works and you, that, you know, we move, you know, nobody thinks about it. Once a month, I think. Yes. <laughs> you know, one of, one of the things I wanted to touch on too that Lynn talked about, you know, community, community development and involvement, you know, we, we are proud and Lynn does have a fun job and it's kind of fun to work with Lynn on some of the things and I, I remember now John mentioned, uh, we, we've been out here before and I met Don before and, and, and Thomas as well. Um, you know, we firmly believe as an organization that investing in communities helps everybody grow. And so when communities prosper, it helps us as a business. And so if there's ways that we can help, we want to help. Um, but also, um, you know, we, we really want to make sure that we provide the best service we can for you. So um, again, through this, the process of franchise is just very open and transparent, um, come to terms and, and look forward to the next 25 years. Sure. Is there any chance of getting the gas bill and the electric bill combined instead of sending out two bills and they have to pay two separate? We're working on that right now, John. <laughs> so uh, just kind of very high level on that. Um, utilities have merged over the last hundred years. And so when you look at like the gas utilities in Wyoming and the electric utilities, you know, we used to have hundreds of utilities in the United States. 
we're down to about 110 now. And so they're, they're the, the artifact of legacy companies. And so when you bring them together, you know, the tariffs are a little different over here. You know, the rules and regulations of each gotcha. utility are a little different. And so what we have to do, John, in order for, to bring those two together, we need to make sure that we get all of the processes integrated into the same thing and then go through the approval processes at the state PUC level to make sure that it happens. It is, what we call that is simplification. Um, we've been working on that in Nebraska for almost 10 years. We have 12 jurisdictions in Nebraska or something like that. So it's it's a process, but we are working on Wyoming uh, right now. It's just it's a, it's a slow process. So we could just give the <clears throat> the when they're due at the same time. Well, we'll take that. I mean, certainly take all the feedback back and. Mine, are, um, mine is here and here, and so then I do have the. I'm old fashioned. I write checks. I hear about it every month. <laughs> No, definitely we'll take the feedback. Um, certainly uh, <clears throat> simple is usually better. So let's let's see if we can make some progress there. Yeah. You know, you know, when we talk about the reliability of the safety on the that's been increasing the reliability for you guys in the last ten years, you know, with the residentials. It's not really much that we think about it, but when his lights are out and just gotta reset our clock or something, but where I work at is pretty detrimental when we have a little bump or something and just in the reliability that we've seen over the last several years um, it's really helped us out yeah i think what we do i think it would be the big difference for for you guys and all of uh oil leads that we built uh, our new sub the big sub that we have just uh, kind of north of, of town yeah. we had a huge difference of course we brought more line more, more lines into it and so on and it's it's really helped a lot it was it was a very large investment i, I can't remember how many millions i don't have that off the top of head, so i don't want to say would be wrong, but it was a huge investment. But, it, but that's exactly the reason why. Yeah. Just for that, for that. I don't know. That almost two minutes that we were without a power was pretty devastating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, for some people, I'd, I'd say that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't remember it happening all year. Yeah. Uh, probably yeah. for the last that's three good. or four years. We're, 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 we're glad that you, you don't yeah. have to think about it. Yeah, that's, really. That's, that's our goal. It's been good. No, we didn't. I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we had, um, so we, we track that saving number every single year. And, you know, as we invest in our system, what we've seen since winter, uh, winter storm atlas in 2013, we've increased our vegetation management and increased our integrity work. And you see that in the, the, the outage minutes going down, 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 down. Mm -hmm. and so we see it in the, in the paper. So um, definitely is, is worth doing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be ridiculous with this, but uh, Jeff Bezos talked to the United States uh, Energy Commission, and he, he's got permission to put satellites up that will catch the solar and beam it down for electrical power on the Earth. Yeah. And he got permission to stick up 3,800 satellites here about a year ago. And my thought on that immediately, when, when, when Jeff got that, I mean, he, he just keeps piling up the money. But as it is now, if, if I wanted to produce electric power, you, you have to let me sell it to you, right? If I, if I produce my little whatever. Wind turbine or solar panel. I've been trying to talk these guys into getting them, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, I, I digest it. And burn it yes, I just, we, we actually, we, we do that in our, in our um, Iowa and our um, Kansas utilities. We partner with the wastewater plants. We're capturing the methane off of the digesters and, and processing it and then putting it back on a distribution system. Mm. I think we're small, small to do that. But you're pretty small, and you need to have a really old landfill too. It has to be a very old. Well, we got one. I'm going to close on the top of it. Somebody's going to pull the trigger one day. <laughs> anyway, I didn't want to lose Jeff. Now, my thought was, as soon as he, as he got permission to do all that, why can't someone like you? Sue the feds, or not sue them, but but get to where he has to let you in on the deal. That he has to, you know, I, I don't know if there's some way you can do that. Because he's just going to monopolize the, the whole damn thing. And it's, it's not pleasant to have a monopoly. And it's a, uh, let's just say that, you know, energy is incredibly important. 
the transmission to get that energy to wherever we need it is really important. And you know, Ken talked about the project already, the only project that we're working on, and the one we just did. Um, that's a little beyond our our twenty year planning. <laughs> <laughs> we're not thinking about satellites. <laughs> we're, we're thinking. You know what? I would say this: we we believe in a responsible, balanced approach to energy, um, but we are looking at innovative technologies every single day. I, I Maybe you could go important. over there and meet with them, Tom. Maybe you could go over to Rapid and meet with these people. Well, we've got to sit here till seven. We might as well visit with these people. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We can't even start the other meeting. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the law, you know. But, uh, no kidding. I think that uh, I just can't stand monopolies, and that's exactly what he's getting to become. And I think that you guys are, you're the little guys in that case. And, and I don't think you should get left out. We're always looking for opportunities. So. Well, <laughs> in 20 years from now, if he's, if he's allowed that time to build his thing, you'll never get in. So I think you should go to big guys now and start saying, hey, we need to start thinking about these satellites. See what, our, what role they can play in our 20 year plan. Write your congressman. No, I'm talking to the people who do that. That's what you play a congressman about. No, it is it's they a do. very interesting technology. Well, it is, and, and it's 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 how coming. feasible is that? I'm I'm not in an area to speak to the expertise yeah. of that knowledge. So. I look at <laughs> that, and I think what maybe we can roast a cow or two. But Walter, what we can know is Jeff Bezos has his money in it. It's probably a dang good idea. Well, he's getting a lot of money from the U.S. government too. Well, sure he does. He Anyway. I used to work in the coal bed methane out north of Gillette. Um, did you guys ever purchase any of that yet? I didn't hear the question, I'm sorry. The coal bed methane development in Gillette. So we actually had, no, we had, we had, we had it's all dried up now, yeah. but I, I, I was involved. There were actually wells on our Wyadag coal plant, or coal mine, that were operated by another producer that did the CDM. Then what about the uh, the Osage power plant? Were you guys involved with those? Oh yeah, yeah. was that one of your plants? Oh, yeah. yeah, that was a deal. Mike seen too. That was a deal plant. It was so old. What they did is they poured the coal on a conveyor belt and it just ran through the plant. It was so inefficient, it was horrible. But but at the time it was of course in the dome. But yeah, it was so inefficient and it, and it was dirty. Was well, you never forgot you tore it down. Yeah, I watched, I watched them. With hey, but then we built a bunch more. So. Yeah. It's, the water operator for that system for a little while. Oh, yeah. I watched some decommissioned Yeah, I was out there. So, In addition to the weekly printed version of the newsletter journal, we also promote our community and share important information on our award winning website, newslj.com, and in our weekly email newsletter, Nuke Now. We also connect with readers through various social media platforms and invite you to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can even take a look at a recent meeting of the City Council, School Board, or County Commission on our YouTube channel. We do hope that you will go to NewsLJ.com and subscribe today, and we look forward to making all of our great content available to you. But regardless of your level of support, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing your part to preserve a free and independent local press.